The year 2022 made millions of people once again remember why war is a terrible event. But if the war goes on for a long time, becoming a daily routine, then we all gradually become indifferent to military reports, the deaths of soldiers and civilians, and the cities and villages wiped off the face of the earth. What can overcome human indifference and stop the war? Fortunately, history already has an answer to this question. The wars in Vietnam and Afghanistan have much in common. Both lasted for 10 years, and in both wars, neither the USSR nor the USA were able to achieve their goals. However, there is a significant difference between them, and in this video, we will talk about it. Subscribe to our channel Epoch Icons, like, ring the bell, and support us with a donation. This will help us release new videos more often. All links are in the description. Let's start delving into the history of the two wars chronologically. The war in Vietnam happened before the Afghan one. The precursor to this war was the collapse of the French colonial empire. After World War II, France was unable to contain the national movements in its Indochinese colonies and was unwilling to simply let them go. In 1946, it started a war in an attempt to halt the disintegration of its once mighty colonial empire. The war lasted for eight years and ended with the defeat of the French forces at the Vietnamese city of Dien Bien Phu. The Indochina War had a significant impact on the region's subsequent history. During the peace negotiations known as the Geneva Conference, Vietnam was divided into two parts. The northern part became the Communist Democratic Republic of Vietnam, with its capital in Hanoi, and the southern part became the pro-French Republic of Vietnam, with its capital in the city of Saigon. Despite the peaceful agreement that after free elections in each of the states, the process of reunification should begin, the newly formed states were not eager to coexist peacefully, and each dreamed of uniting the territory of the once unified state of Vietnam under its rule. The warring sides were on opposite sides of the then Cold War peace. North Vietnam relied on the support of the USSR, while the South relied on the support of the USA. The American Domino Doctrine assumed that if South Vietnam became communist, then all the neighboring states of Southeast Asia would fall under communist control. After the Geneva Accords, the USA took a course to replace France as a counterbalance to communist forces in Indochina. At first, there was no official deployment of troops. The weakness of the political leadership and constant military coups in South Vietnam had a negative impact on the course of the fighting. The northern neighbor actively began to seize border territories. To counter this, the USA increased its troop presence to 120,000 in 1964 and engaged in active combat operations. A huge amount of American literature is dedicated to the Vietnam War, and the tactics used by the U.S. Army are simply chilling. Water poisoning, soil destruction, deforestation, and mass shootings of innocent local residents. However, it is worth noting that the North Vietnamese Army also committed war crimes and was not at all less cruel. Nevertheless, despite this, the war ended in 1975. America withdrew its troops from Vietnam. The perception of the war by American society shifted from mass support to a serious anti-war movement which became one of the main reasons for the end of the military operations. One of the triggers that gave a powerful impetus to the anti-war movement was the revelation of a war crime committed by the U.S. Army in the village of Mai Lai in 1968. U.S. soldier Ronald Rittenhauer and photographer Ronald Haberl reported the incident to the country's leadership and the media. U.S. Secretary of Defense Melvin Laird warned the then-President Nixon that the mass killing in Mai Lai could put our government in a very difficult position and would play into the hands of the pacifists, and he was right. The political leadership of the United States could no longer ignore the anti-war movement. If in 1967 the protest movement was scattered, with no more than 150,000 participants nationwide, in 1970, in response to the U.S. invasion of neighboring Cambodia, 
four million high school and college students went on strike. Political activist and one of the organizers of the anti-war movement, Bill Zimmerman, stated, when you believe your government is committing crimes or not meeting the demands of its people, you must stand up and say something. If you are still not heard, you must do something more dramatic. The lesson of this day is that with enough people, you can overcome the force of the police. Resistance works. Today, we, as Americans, have every reason to protest and resist. The Afghan War, or as it was often called in the USSR, International assistance to the fraternal Afghan people began in 1979 with the Soviet Special Forces Operation Storm 333. During this operation, Hafizullah Amin, the then General Secretary of the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, was overthrown and killed. All of this was preceded by a period of political instability. Afghanistan was shaken by military coups and constant changes in political courses. Hafizullah Amin took his post as a result of the overthrow and murder of the previous leader, Nur Muhammad Taraki, who had the trust of the USSR. By that time, a powerful armed opposition had already formed in Afghanistan, fighting against government forces. Years of political instability had taken their toll. By overthrowing Amin, replacing him with the fully loyal Babra Karmal, and deploying troops, the Soviet leadership attempted to keep Afghanistan in its sphere of influence and establish a stable, strong authority there. It also took into account the fact that 1979 had been extremely unpleasant for the USSR on the international stage. A longtime ally, Egypt, had taken a course towards rapprochement with America, a military conflict with Communist China was looming, and in Iran, the Communist Party was destroyed and banned during the Islamic Revolution. By the time of the storm operation, the armed opposition forces numbered at least 40,000, engaging in combat with the government army in 12 provinces of Afghanistan. Soviet soldiers were opposed by Islamist youth groups, calling themselves Mujahideen. Similar to the soldiers of the North Vietnamese Army, the Mujahideen employed guerrilla warfare tactics, as we already know from the experience of Vietnam, this method always poses a great danger to the civilian population. And during the fighting, the Soviet army committed a large number of war crimes, but none of them became as well known in the world as the massacre in My Lai. You will not find mentions of the crimes of the Soviet army in the Russian version of Wikipedia. You can only read about them in English. The most massive of these crimes is the war crime committed by the Soviet army in the Lagman province, according to international human rights organizations, in which about 1,000 civilians were killed. In November 1989, the Supreme Soviet of the USSR declared an amnesty for all crimes committed by Soviet servicemen in Afghanistan. Over the 10 years of the Afghan war, the USSR lost 15,000 servicemen killed and nearly 54,000 wounded. By the end of the 1980s, the leadership of the crisis-ridden Soviet Union found the strength to acknowledge the mistake of the Afghan war and the deployment of Soviet soldiers to a foreign country, as recorded in a resolution of the Congress of People's Deputies. However, except for the families who lost relatives and friends in Afghanistan and the military units where the wounded were treated, the full extent of all the losses of the Afghan war and its horror was never fully realized by the population of the USSR. The main reason for this was the information blockade surrounding the operations of the limited contingent of Soviet troops. There were scant reports in the newspapers and no television coverage. As you can understand, under such conditions, there was no opportunity for an anti-war movement to emerge and the main reason for the withdrawal of troops was the unfolding economic crisis in the country. Unlike the Vietnam War, there are very few works of art about the war in Afghanistan, and those that have been made cannot reflect the horror of what was happening. And often the emphasis is shifted not towards the fact that war is horrible, but towards the idea that war is the fate of heroes. Neither the USSR nor the USA are ideals of goodness. However, Despite all the similarities in the wars conducted by both countries in the 20th century, these wars, like the Cold War, 
ended in completely different ways. The USSR lost in the Afghan war and, collapsing, suffered defeat in the Cold War. The USA lost in Vietnam, but won in the Cold War. The Afghan war did not bring anything new to Soviet and later Russian society. In Russian society, few know about what happened in the Lagman province. Now we painfully observe how the unlearned lessons of the past are very painfully affecting all of us in the present. The Vietnam War showed us that no matter how cruel a war may be, it is precisely the vivid depiction of cruelty, the illumination of the problem, and the discussion in a free society that can provide a stunning and magnificent lesson. Yes, wars still exist, but thorough investigation of committed war crimes and public trials of the participants give us hope that no matter how unjust and cruel a war may be, our opinion and desire can stop it. And where one war stops, all can stop.